In this video, we're going to look at using the binomial expansion for positive integer powers of n to find approximations. Let's say I wanted to find 1.009 to the power of 20, and I wanted to give my answer now to five decimal places, or seven decimal places. One way we could do this is to use the expansion of 1 plus x to the n. So we've got a positive integer power, we would end up now expanding this out. We've seen in previous videos, this gives us 1 plus n multiplied by x, plus n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial. Then we'd have plus n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. So this would give us the expansion, and this is often given to us in a formula book. So let's see what we'd need to do. We would let x, so just writing this out, let x be equal to 0 0.009. We would let n be equal to 20, and we would go ahead and sub those values in to the expansion. Quite clearly, the level of accuracy now will increase the more terms we include. So if I now include term in x to the fourth, it will be more accurate. This is a linear approximation. This is a quadratic. This is a cubic. So we can see the cubic will be better than the quadratic, which will be better than the linear. We might see another example. Let's say we wanted to find now 0 0.97, and we wanted to find now, let's raise that to a power 14, and we wanted to find an approximation to nine decimal places. So in this particular case, we would let x be equal to minus 0 0.03, we would have now n equal to 14, and we would go ahead, sub those values in, and expand. In terms of the size of x, the smaller the better. In terms of the number of the, the terms that we have, the more the better. What we're going to do in later units is look when n isn't a positive integer and some of the constraints. But essentially when we have now this positive integer n, we can sub in any value of x and find an approximation. So what we're going to do now is look at an example of this. And let's say I wanted to, let's say I've got one point, let's go for 1.01, .01, and I wanted now this to the seventh power, and I wanted an approximation, and I wanted this now to five decimal places. So one method I could use is one plus x to the power of n. So if we consider just expanding this, we see that that's going to give us one plus n multiplied by x plus n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial, plus, then we're going to have n, then we'll have n minus 1, then we'll have n minus 2, and we'll have x cubed over 3 factorial. Now, I could keep going, of course. We want this now to five decimal places. So what I'm going to have now is the coefficient, whatever our coefficient is, essentially being multiplied by powers of 0 0.01. So what we're going to do is now let x be equal to 0 0.01. So if I add these two, 1 plus 0 0.01 is going to give me 1.001. Uh, um, let's now write down n. n is going to be equal to 7. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead now. What I'm going to do is just consider how many terms I need in this expansion to give me something accurate to five decimal places. I'm just going to do this down here. So let's just go down and have a look at that. So if I take now x to be equal to 0 0.01. So if I raise this now to the first power, 0 0.01 to the first is 0 0.01. 0 0.01 squared, we're going to have 0 0.0001. If I cube this term, we're going to have now 0 0.01 cubed, so we're going to get now 6, so 1, 2, there we go. And then if I take this now to the fourth power, so if I had expanded another term, I would have had now 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 2, 3, 4. So quite clearly, when I multiply by the coefficient, remember, we're going to be subbing in 7 then times by 6 over 3 factorial. Quite clearly, if I now include the next term, that will not affect now the fifth decimal place. So all we're going to do is expand up to and include in the term in x cubed, which we've done here, and then sub in. So what I'm now going to say then is the following. 1.01 .01 to the power of 7 is approximately equal to 1 plus, now we've got nx, so all we're doing is subbing in the values. So this is 7 multiplied by x, which will be 0 0.01, plus n, which is 7, 
multiplied by n minus 1, which is going to give us 6. And then we're going to have now 0 0.01, which we square. We now need to divide this by 2 factorial, or we could just write multiply by 1 half. I prefer to write multiply by 1 half, especially if we have fractional values, as we can see a clear denominator. Let's now look at the next one. We're going to have 7, that's n, n minus 1, which is 6, n minus 2, which is 5. We'll now take our 0 0.01, and we will cube this, and then we're going to now divide. So let's just uh, move this across and we will just now get this into place so let's move that there and then what we're going to do is divide by 3 factorial 3 factorial is going to be 6 I can write that as 1 over 6 and that's one way so what we're going to have now is a cubic approximation so let's go ahead and do this now we would uh, we could serve this straight into a calculator often you expect it to show workings so I'll do what I can and then we'll tidy this up so what we're going to have then is 1 plus 0 0.07. Now if we consider this, what we're going to have is the following. The half and the 6 will cancel. 7 times by 3 is 21. And then we're going to have 0 0.0001. I'm squaring that one. If we consider now the 6s are going to cancel, 7 times by 5 is 35. And then we're going to have the 0 0.0000001. So that's now cubing this bracket right here. So that's what we're going to get. And this will give us now an approximation. And as we can see, this is going to be now accurate to five decimal places if we want it to be. In a calculator, 0 0.01, we can just put this in as our answer. So if I wanted to at this stage, and I'll follow it from this point, we'd have 1 plus. Then we're going to have now 7 lots of my answers. So what I'm doing is following this. 1 plus 7 answer. Then we're going to have the next one, which we know is going to be 21, uh, let's put plus, plus 21 lots of the answer squared. In some exams, you will be expected to show this. Do check with your teacher or the exam board exactly what they want. Then we're going to get plus 35, and then we'll have our answer cubed. So if we go ahead and do this, that's going to give me now, and we'll write this down, this is 1.07, what's it, 2135, let's just check that, check I've written it down correctly. So that now gives me the value. We need to give this to five decimal places. So we're going to say now 1.07214, and that is the 5DP. Now how accurate is that? Well, let's have a look at this on a calculator. If I went ahead and I store this in, let's just go ahead and store that in. What I do now is put 1.01. This is the actual value. So we can see now that that is pretty close. We can see we're good up to now this point right here, which is now the sixth decimal place. So if I'd included more terms, if I'd included the quartic term, we would have seen addition, uh, additional values added to that. Quite clearly, the more of those terms we have, the more we're adding. But the more we're adding when x is small, we're adding insignificant amounts to our value. Therefore, the level of accuracy is not going to be affected if we're only given now, say, two decimal places, three decimal places. It will just add to that. Now, sometimes you might be asked to find the percentage error. And all we would do for that is to write now 1.0, so we've got 1.01 .01 to the power of 7 minus the answer that we found, which is 1.072135. And then we would divide it by the correct value, and that would be 1.01 .01, uh, to the power of 7 and multiply by 100. And this would give us now the level of accuracy, or if you like, the percentage error. So we're going to see that that's going to be pretty small. So what I'm going to do then is the following. If I put in 1.01 .01 to the power now of 7, and then what we're going to do is minus, and we stored it in our answer just here, that was A. Then we put this over 1.01 .01 to the power of 7, and then we multiply this by 100, we will see that this is an incredibly small percentage error. So as you can see, it's tiny. Uh, 3.28 to the uh, multiply by 10 to the minus 5. So we can see just how accurate these approximations can be. Okay, let's go ahead.